Welcome in to another episode of On The Beat Live, perhaps the final episode of the 23-24 season. We know that the Olympic sports are still going on. We know that baseball is still going on. But for On The Beat, this is the ceremonial, perhaps last episode of the combined football basketball season. So here we are to talk about the year that was, talk about Jeremiah's first year on the beat, Evan's first year working with Inside Carolina. Adam Smith will also be joining us later this evening to recap all things UNC and the the season that was both from a football and basketball perspective. Before we jump in to the recap of the past year, there has been a little bit of news this week. Uh, So we wanted to get the reaction from some of our beat writers here. Jeremiah, R.J. Davis has elected to return to North Carolina. He's going to be playing a fifth season in Chapel Hill. When you heard that news this week and just all the reporting that you've done uh, on R.J. Davis over the season, what was your reaction to that news? Yeah, well, certainly uh, you have to give a big shout out to, obviously, uh, you know, Sherelle McMillan, who, you know, for a long time was, you know, piecing the, you know, I guess the pieces of the puzzle together and really kind of getting everything, uh, you know, laid out, man. So, you know, we were, you know, pretty much expecting it, man. But, you know, from my perspective of having covered him this year, um, obviously going into the year, you knew that the COVID year was a possibility for, you know, and this is uh, for those keeping track at home, this year's senior class, as in the four year seniors this year, they're the last group that has that COVID year. Um, so, you know, essentially RJ Davis kind of getting that, that player option, uh, you know, so to speak to, uh, you know, to come back for the, for the NBA fans. But, um, you know, for me, you know, just watching the season that he had, you know, the way he was able to really establish himself as, you know, the best player in the ACC. I mean, the fact that he's returning for another year and I think it's a big, obviously, you know, uh, uh, a huge asset to retain if you're North Carolina, to say the least, Um, you know, you obviously do have, you know, really your same guards coming back plus Ian Jackson coming in there. So to have a guy as experienced as RJ and also from a scoring standpoint, uh, you lost a lot of scoring, like you lost uh, Ingram, you lost Cormac and you lost Armando. So those guys with RJ being number one, those were your two, three, and four in some order. Those are your two, three, and four scores. So to keep your number one score, uh, you know, is certainly a big deal. Uh, I am kind of interested, and they were talking about this on the podcast on the Coast to Coast Emergency Pod as well. Like, there are some ways, you know, funny enough that he can kind of get better as a scorer just based on the different types of defenses that he sees. Like, you know, like there are some of those. Uh, you know, kind of taller defenders, um, you know, that, you know, maybe you can find ways to, you know, you know, counter those defenses and even like someone like a Tyrese Proctor with the face guarding and all that. So um, there's even so there's even, you know, that underlying element, too, of like what more does RJ kind of add to his game? Because you saw the year by year progression. So in year five, uh, a guy that's old enough to be a pro and, um, you know, maybe if he was, you know, a few inches taller, maybe he would be, you know, a, a quote unquote better prospect in the eyes of some, you know, teams or whatever. But, um, you know, certainly a a big get for UNC. The fact that it's their third year in a row having a homegrown fifth year senior and then really their second year in a row having one that was, well, I guess RJ didn't start a ton his freshman year. He started some, but not not as much. Like Armando was a, a straight up, he only came off the bench one time in his career. So RJ would have been in and out the first year, but basically, I mean, close enough. Like he was a rotational five-year player. Um, so, you know, the fact that they're getting that level of experience back and that caliber of a score back, uh, you know, that puts them, you know, right back in the mix of where they just were. And, um, you know, not too much of a drop-off for a team that really only lost one guy in the portal. They lost some seniors, but to only lose one guy in the portal and bring back your best player, I mean, that's like, you know, I don't know that this offseason could have really – gone much better for them and i know they're still pursuing guys but i don't know how much better uh they could have did at this point of the at this point of the offseason absolutely i like what ec keller said i wish they would keep allowing that extra covid year i think it provided some better basketball you can definitely say across the full landscape of college basketball there's been some really uh you know 
there's been some benefits to allowing players to come back for that fifth year. Some of the stars of college basketball have stuck around a little bit longer. Uh, Evan, what about for you when you think about what this R.J. Davis uh, commitment to come back another year means? What was your uh, first impressions from from that news? I think my first impression was you're getting the preseason ACC player for next year back. He probably is going to be, if not the preseason national player of the year, he's going to be in contention with that. Uh, he and Hunter Dickinson are, you know, the two big all Americans coming back. And I think it solidifies. I know there's still a lot of stuff that still has to go down with the portal with other teams across the country, but it'd be tough to find a better backcourt in the country than what UNC is going to be having back. Mm. When you consider Elliot Cadeau in his yeah. sophomore year, you got RJ Davis coming back. You've got Seth Trimble and his defensive versatility. And then you've got Ian Jackson, you know, five-star McDonald's all American who can get hot in a hurry. Um, they just have a really well-rounded backcourt. And I think it's going to be interesting and exciting to see how those four players kind of mesh and, and how the minutes are figured out. That's going to be something that Hubert Davis and the staff are going to have to figure out. And like Jeremiah said, I think there still is a step that R.J. Davis, you know, even though he did average 21 points per game, there's another step he can take in his offensive development and kind of figuring out how to handle those lanky, defensive, versatile guys. And he struggled with Tyrese Proctor in the meetings against Duke. Uh, Rylan Griffin gave him a lot of trouble in that Alabama game, the last game of the season. So there are other steps that RJ can continue to take. And I, I just think, I mean, a lot of credit needs to be given to the staff of the the ability to retain guys, especially in the, the portal era where across the country you see a lot of even top blue blood, blue chip programs losing multiple guys this offseason. You've only lost one player to the portal, and, you know, he didn't really play that much. So, I mean... Everyone likes to get the splashy transfer, you know, portal guy coming in or getting the big get out of the portal. But sometimes the best gets you get are the ones that you keep, the guys you retain. And that's what UNC did. You know, they, they got Seth Trimble to, you know, get out of the portal and they got RJ Davis to come back. Yeah. Um, I do still think they're, you know, an addition or two away, specifically in the front court, for really, you know, talking about the potential to quote unquote run it back and even have more of a special season next year. Uh, but this was certainly a, a huge step in that direction. Yeah, and I'm mindful as well as we bring in Adam Smith to the picture. Welcome, Adam. Good to see you. Sorry about that, guys. A little wacky around here tonight. It is all good. We were just talking about the news hey guys. about R.J. Good. Davis coming back to UNC for a fifth season. I was going to make the point that I was minded, uh, reminded of a quote from Nikola Jokic that he gave this week. Um, and I'm not going to get the exact quote right. So the spirit of the quote was about <laughs> the run that his team, the Nuggets, have been on the last few years and the chemistry that has developed over the course of those seasons. And basketball is a game about chemistry, knowing your teammates, knowing what they like, they dislike. And I think that's going to be so big for UNC heading into the upcoming season. The chemistry that Elliot Cadeau and R.J. Davis will have the chemistry that R.J. Davis now has with the rest of the roster around him. I think that's going to pay huge dividends for UNC, that compounding effect of chemistry players playing together for years and years together um, is, is a real, you know, it stands out across the rest of the college basketball landscape. I saw a snapshot of Kentucky's roster um, and it was a complete, you know, transplant, you know, team pulled together from different conferences and things like that, whereas UNC has that continuity, which is great to see. Adam, when you heard the news about R.J. Davis, what stood out to you or any reflections on the R.J. Davis returning to Chapel Hill news before we go in to our quotes, moments, and anecdotes from the season that was? Oh, man. I might need to find some quotes. Uh, <laughs> well, of course, I was uh... – up at 3 a.m. refreshing Instagram, um, waiting for the uh, RJ announcement, which wouldn't make any sense because I'm not on Instagram or Facebook or I guess Twitter is the only thing. But uh, I'm enjoying the comments over here already. Look at Martha Vetter. Martha Evan Rogers is going to be continuing. We're bringing uh, him back. He might, him back. he might be making that announcement at 4 a.m. on his own personal <laughs> Instagram page. So we'll see. <laughs> Evan, if you're returning for another year or not, I know you, you've looked around in the portal a little bit. We'll see what happens. I see George Jenkins. Ha ha. Funny, funny. It's true. <laughs> About the, the age doubling. Very true. I mean, <laughs> hey, what can you do? But um, 
But yeah, you know, someone was explaining to me, uh, well, you know, RJ was on the West Coast, so it was only midnight. Uh, I guess he's in L.A. training. Is that correct? Something like that. Um, so anyway, still midnight. I mean, what are we doing here? And this thing, I mean, I feel like was this was this even a secret at this point? I mean, Sherelle McMillan has been reporting for weeks. You know, I guess we, we sort of saw the saw it inch toward becoming more and more of a reality uh, with each Sherelle scoop that I was breathlessly clicking on. Uh, you know, every time you see one of those things drop, it's like you want to stop what you're doing and and uh, and get in that thing. But I mean, uh, you know, it's it's interesting thinking. I don't know if Jeremiah thinks about it this way since we were both there for the 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 game that that UNC lost to Alabama in the Sweet 16. But you know, I was thinking about that that image of Armando mm -hmm. and RJ walking out of mm -hmm. uh, the arena, the crypt as the Staples Center is now called. Um, but, you know, I remember thinking like, damn, you know, it's it's obviously a strange time in college sports, but it's, you know, I was, it, you know, it, it had the the feeling of the end of an era, um, mm -hmm. you know, with those guys, Armando staying five years and you didn't know if RJ would be back, but yeah, he's back now. Um, I don't know how the heck you top. What do you do for an encore? Um, ACC player of the year, first team All-American. Um, and you've seen that you've seen the math that if he has the season, if he duplicates the season like he did this year, which I mean, the guy, what he averaged 21 points, yeah. um, you know, he could become UNC's all time leading scorer passing Tyler Hansbrough, which who obviously did it in four years, but you know, I think you've got to be, um, super pleased, obviously, if you're a UNC fan. I saw somebody, I'd have to scroll way back. They had somebody had a great comment about it. Cliff Notes, Ross Rollins. Excellent job, Ross. Bravo. Yeah, I think, you know, I think as fantastic as it is, you know, to, to have RJ Davis back in the fold, I think Carolina fans are sort of waiting breathlessly uh, for a five-man that, that UNC probably desperately needs if they want to be a, a championship contender. I think the Cade Tyson – Arrival through the portal is huge, obviously. I don't know if you guys have talked about that or not, but, you know, the portal is closed. Um, but we'll see what pieces Hubert Davis puts together. Yeah, he met with the uh, – how do you say his name? Adu Thierio? Is that right? Someone help me. Thierro. Uh, what is it? Thierro. Thierro. Are you sure on that, Evan? And then Cliff Amori. Cliffy. Um, the Cliff Notes. But, you know, like it seems like it seems like UNC is going to have to wait a while to hear uh, from a do. Uh, hopefully he won't bid them a do. Huh? There you go. Laugh track. Um, but, you know, it's going to be interesting to see these pieces of the puzzle. But R.J. Davis obviously is massive. You have a fifth year guy who's the ACC player of the year and all American rather than maybe running Ian Jackson out there or Seth Trimble out there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think I. I think it's huge, and the fact that it literally dropped overnight was a little hilarious. I mean, Jeremiah, God bless him. It's just, somebody needs to send him a fruit basket because Jeremiah had the story pre-written to plug in, and uh, he made the joke. I hope he doesn't mind me saying he made the joke that he might delete Instagram for a week after uh, waiting, <laughs> waiting. That wasn't a joke. That was not a joke. <laughs> I might do that for real. <laughs> So everyone send your uh, send your NIL donations to Evan for a, another year with us and Jeremiah for having to deal with uh, the RJ soap opera. I I'll tell you, where is the respect for the print deadlines? You know, back in the day, the print deadline was at 10, 10 p.m. And RJ just goes off at 3 a.m. Eastern with this big news. I'll do a quick rundown of the current UNC basketball roster because it changes every time we gather for On The Beat Live. So currently, R.J. Davis, Jalen Withers will be the elder statesman of the team, Jalen Washington, Seth Trimble, and Tyson, as we've already referenced on the show, the new addition via the portal, sophomores, Elliot Cadeau, Zayden High, and then the three freshmen coming in. So that's the current state of the roster. I think when I look at the roster now, keep in mind, it's not finished. This is not a finished product. But I'm also wondering about the defensive capabilities of this roster and more specifically on the wings. I'm just thinking about how do you replace Harrison Ingram, his physicality, his defensive rebounding. He was so critical 
to this team in, in that way. And I haven't necessarily seen a replacement of his defensive rebounding prowess from that uh, wing position yet this offseason. And then Cormac Ryan, you know, so much of the focus was on his offense all last season, um, you know, his shooting and his streaky shooting. But he really battled on the defensive end. And some of UNC's best games were the games that he was just scrapping and, and clawing uh, defensively, you know, guarding some of the other team's best players. Both of those guys, too, Harrison and Cormac, had good size to them. Um, I think that's why, as well, it's important that you got Seth Tremble back because he can be the uh, sort of player that you build your perimeter defense around. He's just that dominant of a defender. Uh, from any th- of the three of you, any final basketball thoughts, any other points you wanted to get in before we talked about uh, the whole season at large and did some storytelling for the for the viewers here? Yeah, um, I could throw one in there. Uh, Adam actually did remind me of that moment in uh, in L.A. Yeah, when it was R.J. and uh, Armando like walking out. It was also kind of crazy. If you guys, one of my favorite parts of March Madness every year and it's at the very end, but like when they put the one shining moment videos out, like I've always actually just really been a fan of those videos. I just, I just have. So RJ and Armando uh, are like in the video together when it's like the all the years part because they're obviously, I mean, one of the older tandems in college basketball, especially if you consider the fact that they've been teammates for four years. So it's like, you know, when that kind of showed, it was like, oh wow, like, you know, those dudes have really been. And we knew it throughout the whole season. Like, you know, we've we've kept up with their careers and everything, but it's like these guys put in a lot of years, you know, like, you know, on the same team. And it's kind of rare to have a, um, you know, a duo like that. Um, But, yeah, I mean, the fact that that's somewhat continued, because it did kind of seem like when you looked at it, like if you saw it in real time when they walked out, you know, to go to the press conference room or matter of fact, this might have been. After the press, this might have been like when they were like leaving, leaving. Yeah, this was like when they were leaving, leaving. Um, it was kind of like, okay, UNC's like starting over because uh, because RJ's like the last like Roy holdover as well. So it's like, okay, so that's kind of like fully like going into a new, but um, like Adam said, like, you know, he's going to try to give a, uh, a encore, uh, you know, type season. And so it'll, I'm very interested to see how that'll go with all the young guards there. Like, I'm very interested to see like, you know, how his kind of, a lot of the same stuff we were asking uh, Armando last year about his fifth year and his experience. We're going to be asking RJ. So it's going to be a uh, interesting year to cover for sure. And just real quickly on that too, just, I guess we've mentally, we've gone back to LA. Um, is there a Biggie <laughs> song going back, back to Cali, Cali, um, something like that. <laughs> Dating myself again. Um, but one of the things I have thought about and, and Evan wrote about it uh, when Seth Trimble got into the portal, is how upset Seth Trimble was that night. And with that, I'm pumped personally, selfishly, that Seth Trimble is coming back because I, I really like the guy as a person. I really like talking to him as a reporter. Um, he's super nice. Jeremiah and I tend to see his family a lot when we're traveling, see his dad and his mom in airports and stuff. And, um, you know, it, it just it, – when you think about the way seasons end or you think about triumphant moments like 2017, 2009, like you think about just the final game of a season, for whatever reason, the, the job that we do, those behind the curtain moments sort of stick with you. And, you know, I'll, I'll remember the joy of Isaiah Hicks and Joel Berry and Theo Pinson and Justin Jackson, those guys from 2017 forever. But, um, I think if Seth Trimble had ended up in a different uniform, which you can't blame the guy, he wants to play, I will, I would have always remembered what Evan wrote about, and that was how upset he was. He might have been the most visibly upset. He probably was, I think, Jeremiah would agree. The most visibly upset UNC Tar Heel that night after the Alabama loss. I think RJ was in shock, as he said. Um, but Seth was crying. I actually apologized to Seth for – sticking my butt basically in his face to try to get to RJ because they're the same lock lockers yeah. right side by side there in the locker room. And um, he had some interesting comments that night too, that again, that, that Evan has written about, we've written about. Um, but you know, that was, that was one of the ones that sticks out. So, you know, I'm, I think it's, I think it's great from our point of view to have him coming back 
to be able to cover him. I think versus for Hubert Davis's use, he has a whole lot of versatile options in that backcourt now. Um, so I just want to throw that in about Seth Trimble real quick. I love it. You referenced going back to Los Angeles for the final on the beat live of the 2023, 24 season. We want to do some looking back as well. So after the break, we're all four going to share our favorite quote moment or anecdote from the year on the beat that was. So I'll give you a little bit of time to think about that panelist in the meantime, before the ad break, this is an excellent question from George Jenkins. And George, I appreciate this question. It uh, says, best arena food on the road and worst arena food you had this year. So this is a question for Adam, but we're actually going to start with Evan because this was your first time, you know, getting on the road a little bit, maybe traveling a little bit. You know, maybe if you can't pick out your, your best or worst, that's okay. But any reflections from traveling and some of the food that you received on the It's a great question, by the way. Excellent question, George. You've done it again. Is When we say arena food, are we re- referring to the media meal? Yes. Okay. Um, the worst one, I know exactly what it is, and it's it might get me in trouble, and that's okay. And it's actually not from the road, and it is fourth quarter pizza – for UNC football. I just, especially, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to qualify this with a lot of UNC games this year because Drake may was quarterback. We're at night. They had a lot of 6 PM, 7 PM, 8 PM kickoffs. Mm-hmm. And by the time fourth quarter pizza came around, it's maybe 10 30, 11 o'clock. I had already eaten before the game itself. Um, sometimes a lot of the times, honestly, me, Adam and Jeremiah didn't even go to get the fourth quarter pizza. We would get the pizza after we did the press conferences that night. And we probably ate, mm-hmm. I don't even want to know how much pizza after one thirty in the morning that season. I mean, there, mm-hmm. there, there was a good, a good bit of pizza consumed at a gross hour to be consuming it. Um, so that no doubt is, is my least, uh, my favorite Oh man, this is tough. I'm looking at the schedule right now to try. Yeah, to me too. It. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, uh, I mean, we ate in at Madison Square Garden. You know, like you know. See, <laughs> I'm trying to think because I went to Atlanta. The Georgia Tech food was fine. Uh, Charlottesville was fine. Did they have Mission Barbecue at all uh, this they, season for basketball? Yeah, I didn't want to go at home again because that'd be kind of cheating. Um, Mission was really good. Um. I'm trying to think if we went anywhere else. You could the, include uh, brunch in Atlanta with the Jim Hawkins. Oh, <laughs> that's a really good one. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, brunch at brunch at uh, with Jim's family. Our photographer was fun and really good. Also, the Italian restaurant we went to the night before. I can't remember the name of it. That place um, was really really good. I see Adams agreeing with me there. I can't remember the name of it. Oh man, but yeah, the Atlanta trip had some really good food. Um, and yeah, Mission Barbecue, which for those who don't know, that UNC basketball rolls out the red carpet uh, once every year. Usually it's for the Duke game. This year it wasn't the Duke game, and everyone thought it wasn't coming. And then it actually showed up for senior night where they've got hmm. barbecue, smoked sausage, banana pudding, uh, mac and cheese, coleslaw, pretty much everything, you name it. And that was really good because I hadn't eaten the media meal in probably – three or four weeks by that point, because I was trying to lay off the the junk food, the fast food. Uh, so that was fun. Um, but yeah, a lot of good food. I'm sure Adam and Jeremiah are going to have a lot better uh, spots than I did. What about for you, Jeremiah? Yeah, we're going to have to work it out with uh, Mr. Sharp, Mr. Jeremy Sharp, get a microwave in, uh, <laughs> in the Keenan Press Box, man. Uh, you know, see if we can get that going. Maybe I can sneak one in. I can all sneak one in. I'll, maybe I'll just clear it beforehand, bring one in there, and just let everybody use it. Um, my phone's gonna be lighting up over here, guys. Good <laughs> oh man, shout out to uh, US football man. Um, the best one, and I did have to kind of flip through the best. One, I actually, I actually liked the bowl game in Charlotte, that food because I remember that kind of being barbecue, cornbread, like that was a good layout. So I liked that one. Um, I kind of remember Charlottesville being pretty good. I don't know if it's like up there, up there, but like for some reason, maybe that's one of the more recent trips we did. So maybe that's why I'm thinking about it. I don't really know. Um, 
one of the more uh, I guess kind of disappointing ones. I don't want to say the worst one. I don't know the worst one. Uh, and it wasn't even like a media made, like like a made media meal. So it's it's, it's not really a knock. I did a uh, I did a women's basketball game at, at a Wake Forest out in Winston Salem, and that was one of those like meal voucher type deals. Um, and so, but like you know, sometimes those are limited. So it's just like you know the you know tenders, like the fried chicken tenders and things like that. So usually like. Uh, you know, if I'm doing a game or something like that, like I do kind of like to, you know, not have to do the, the fried food as much, I guess. But, um, you know, I won't say the word. I mean, it's just like it's, it's you know, it's regular food. I'm not like super picky, you know, as a as an eater, just like in general. So, um, you know, didn't mind it. But I guess if I had if I had to say one, I was going to like I was going to not even answer that part of it. But if I have to say one, I'll just I'll say that one as a. What is it with the right side of this screen wanting to be healthy? There's no, there's no point in trying to be healthy <laughs> with the, you know, there's no way to spin a 1 a.m. slice of pizza. There's just, it's not going to be healthy. It's okay. You just got to own it. Adam, what about for you? Any food related reflections from the season that was? Man, I could go down, you know, I got the dang uh, schedule. Of, I could go down and give you a food related <laughs> reflection on every damn game. Uh <laughs> Highs and lows. I don't know why we didn't go there for football this year, but I started thinking about basketball uh, at BC. But I was going to say, like, it's it's a tough call. COVID, it's understatement of the century. COVID has changed a lot of things. Um, and one of the – we sound so pampered. One of the things that, that uh, took a hit in a lot of places was the meal that they would provide for you. We were very pampered. Um, Evan's already gotten there with his uh, all the fourth quarter pizza. Um, <laughs> but but I will say that at Boston College for football, now I don't know if it will still be this way, but pre pandemic, they used to serve like the authentic clam chowder, like and New England clam chowder, and that stuff was fantastic. I mean, just not you know, you, you might get a lot of hot dogs or hamburgers at different spots, but. Um, BC football was fantastic. I was trying to think like all the different things. Um, you know, we ate in Charlotte a lot this year. Mm -hmm. Me and Jeremiah did, Evan mm -hmm. did. Um, you know, I'm looking at the different places. I mean, not to be a not to pander to the crowd, but you know, the meals at Duke usually aren't the greatest. Uh, <laughs> you just get like a <laughs> press up a, a, a voucher, no voucher and they just no. turn you loose on the concession stand. I will say also, I don't know why I have BC on the brain. At Boston College this year in basketball, uh, it's snowing like crazy up there, too. That was the night I sat beside Bob Ryan. I won't talk about that forever like I did the one time. But um, somehow Jim Hawkins and I, our photographer, ended up with these vouchers that the other media members didn't have. And this is BC basketball. And we went to the concession stands to get, like, food from it. And like the lady was like, my lady was like confused by it. And I'm not joking. These, the, the accents, I mean, who am I to talk about an accent? But the accents were so thick. And it's like, I'm not sure what kind of voucher you got here. This looks <laughs> like a combo meal voucher you got here. This is not a, not a regular media voucher you have here. You know, and she's like trying to check in the back. Like he's got a combo voucher. He's got a family voucher. <laughs> so this is no lie. I left that damn thing with four hot dogs oh, and man. like you know a, like 32 ounce i mean i had like a meal for a family he's got a combo voucher here and i'm like i don't know this is what they gave me you know um which is wild at the, at the conti forum anyway because you know place is more famous for ice hockey than it is basketball you're walking past i go through my phone all the time looking for various things uh you're walking past um yeah that's right adam sandler <laughs> the lunch yeah. lady uh, you know, you're like walking around there and you see like, you know, women's downhill skiing locker room, you know, you're trying to find basketball locker room. There's a skiing locker room, but, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm off the rails here. You know, Florida state doesn't have bad, uh, media meals. They serve it in bulk. Um, but we had a lot of places. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of great meals out. Jeremiah and I had, Jeremiah and I had an excellent meal after the Clemson basketball game. Uh, downtown Clemson, some tacos and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's um, right. That's no, right. We obviously went to New York City. We had some mm -hmm. good deals in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, they were great. They were so, great. Um, I'm not really answering the question, but uh, that's what I've got. I was also trying to figure out that accent. Adam Sandler's not a bad. There was it was like a southern Boston. It was a it was it was wonderful. Adam is is what it was. It was an excellent. I, I love it. I. I I appreciate the extra effort that went into the storytelling there. I I'm appreciate gonna... that lady too. I confused <laughs> the heck out of her and I didn't mean to. Four hot dogs. I won't say if I ate them all or not. Of I course. did eat them all. Shout out to the hardworking members of the concession stands. How about a shout out to Coach Melvin who guards the uh, food at the Smith Center. Yes, uh, my old little league coach uh, works down there uh, in, in the Smith Center. So shout out to Coach Melvin as well. We're going to take a quick second and talk about Johnny T-Shirt, the sponsor of this podcast and the sponsor of all of Inside Carolina's podcasts. It's the number one place to go if you're in the market for UNC gear. It's getting a little bit hotter. It's the summer. If you want to get some new UNC gear for a summer vacation, I always love those pictures or, you know, when you're on your travels, some faraway place and you see someone else wearing a UNC shirt, it's always a, a cool moment and a great way to strike up a conversation. Get a new UNC shirt for your summer vacations or for whatever you need. Maybe a graduation present. I know graduation is coming up as well. If you do any of those gift uh, shopping, do it at Johnny T-Shirt. They have a store on Franklin Street. You can check them out online as well. Inside Carolina premium subscribers get a 10% discount as well. So be sure to use that. We appreciate Johnny T-Shirt for supporting us. And we ask that, that you show them some love as well. We're going to take a quick second let the national guys pay the bills, as Tommy Ashley always says. Shout out to Tommy. Uh, we'll be back in just a second with more from the year that was. This is On The Beat Live. All right, we are back. I am producer John. I'm here with Evan. I'm here with Jeremiah. I'm here with Adam Smith on a Thursday night in May. And we have 171 people watching us live on YouTube. So shout out to everyone who is watching us live here on YouTube, or if you're listening on the podcast stream, shout out to you as well. We're going to take a little bit of time here and do some more storytelling from the year that was. feels like it's been a, a long season. A lot has happened since the first football game in Charlotte against South Carolina. That feels like ages ago. I mean, you know, what was it? Nine sacks in that game. That just feels like so, <laughs> so long ago. Yeah, so we're each going to tell a story from the season that was, it can be a quote. It can be a moment. It can be an anecdote. We'll go around the horn here as Evan and Adam think about it. Jeremiah, you're on the hot seat. I'm starting with you. Uh, what comes to mind? Yeah. Um, I think the thing for me is that I couldn't, Escape South Carolina, no matter what I did, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, talk about how I mean, you mentioned that first football game that was against South Carolina. Uh, and then the women's team came up to uh, to Chapel Hill. So obviously, you know, I was I was at that one. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll do this one because we weren't he, we didn't do a lot of the uh, we didn't really do on the beat when we were doing the tournament. So like um, Selection Sunday, because um, they do like the men's and the women's like on the same day. Um the men's would have been first in my memory. Yeah, the men's would have been first or whatever. Uh, so obviously they get the draw in uh in Charlotte. So, but we you know pretty much figured that the women's ones. You know, sometimes like you know to me they're not some of those projections aren't as much of a sure thing. You know, they're not as uh you know aligned as some people you know probably think. Um, you know, so I'm not really thinking about necessarily where you know the women are going to end up playing because obviously um you know the way we kind of do it is you know we kind of do squad up for you know that men's one. And then, you know, I kind of do what I do for, uh, you know, some of the women's coverage, like, you know, how I can, however I can do it. So it ends up getting lined up that the women have to go to South Carolina, play the undefeated Gamecocks in Columbia, because for those who I'm sure most people know, but in the women's game, if you were a top four seed in whatever region, you actually get to host. So like, unlike North Carolina that has to go to a neutral site, as a one seed, you actually get to host the the actual game. Like you get to host, and not only that, you play your game, but then like that whole like side of it. That it would be like basically if Michigan State and uh, and Mississippi State if they played in Chapel Hill. Like that's basically like what it would be. So um, Columbia is only a ninety minute drive from Charlotte. I've actually made that drive 
plenty of times, you know, my first year, uh, my only year at the South Carolina paper. So, you know, it's kind of a job that I was used to. So when I saw it, not only was it, you know, pretty much, you know, right there, like 90 minutes, it, the days aligned and everything, like it was crazy. Uh, so, you know, I was kind of looking at it and I was kind of, you know, thinking about it, uh, you know, for a little bit. I actually had some South Carolina people hitting me up like, yo, are you going to come cover this game if UNC's there? Uh, well, they were, obviously they played uh, Michigan State, but I stayed. I didn't go to the first game because I was doing some locker room stuff, uh, you know, for the men's tournament. So, um, yeah, So, but anyway, you know, we do the, the men's tournament, uh, you know, the crew that we had, you know, down there to do that. Uh, UNC kind of figured things out against Michigan State. Uh, and funny enough, the women's team played Michigan State too because that was the 8-9 game. So the men's team figured things out against Michigan State. Um, and then that next day, uh, you know, I went back down there. You know, when I left Columbia, like when I moved out, like wasn't really sure when I would go back, when I return, what kind of occasion – I would have to really do that. Um, I do like the city of Columbia and I, you know, definitely met some people down there, uh, you know, that I still know. So like, didn't really know, like, but, you know, I think it was kind of, and I think the reason I picked this story too, is because like, for me was a little bit of like a full circle, maybe even like a closed chapter kind of moment. Cause it's like, okay, like, you know, I don't know. It's something about it. It was something about it. Like, you know, doing that first year, like that was, cause that was obviously like my first job, like, you know, out of, out of school. So, um, you know, kind of returning there like one last time, seeing some of those same people, like, you know, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, you know, so then, yeah, I mean, the grind kind of continued. We went from there or I went from there and then, you know, kind of came back here, had like a day to pack. That was a crazy day. I literally had like a day to just like pack, get stuff together. And then we ended up me and Adam and Jim, uh, going to LA, but yeah, so that would definitely be my story. Just kind of a, you know, it's just funny how life works like that, you know. But yeah, that's what I'll say. And and shout out to Coach Staley as well. I believe Jeremiah, correct me if I'm wrong. She spent a lot of time talking about the importance of local media and you know the connections yeah. that she develops with yeah. the She's, reporters on the beat. For sure, she's very big on that. Um, you know, kind of even when I was. Uh, you know, down there as well, like, you know, definitely, you know, kind of looked out for us and stuff. And then Diana Koval, who's the SID down there, definitely like, you know, looked out for, you know, local media, like if you travel to a game. Um, so, uh, yeah, but they definitely, you know, do have a, you know, that's a pretty big value. Since I did actually, there was an article, I don't even remember, was it Front Office Sports that wrote it? It was somebody that wrote it. Um, yeah, so I ended up reading through there. Uh, I actually recognize, obviously, some of the, the media people that spoke in that article. So, um, you know, yeah, I did not get to talk to Dawn that day, by the way, because UNC's locker room opened like right before she went up there or something like that. So um, I talked to her when she was in Chapel Hill, but I didn't get to talk to her when she was in uh, when I went down to Columbia, though. It's worth mentioning just because this is on the Beat Live. That makes a huge difference when you have that support from the head coach, you know, for the working media. Evan, we're coming to you next, your first year with Inside Carolina, just like Jeremiah's. What stood out to you? Quote, moment, anecdote from the beat this year. Yeah, there were a lot of good ones. Uh, from all the returning of the rental car in Atlanta, which Adam, I'm sure, remembers. Um, I kind of dove into that in a couple of podcasts <laughs> earlier uh, during the football season. But I'm going to do a, a little basketball moment that popped up into my head. It's not the most in-depth in or anything. But I, I want to take everyone back to the first half of the UNC Tennessee game because I remember that game because it was really UNC one of UNC's first big tests. And Tennessee coming into that night was actually the number one adjusted defense on Ken Pomp. And that's all everyone was talking about, the number one defense on Ken Pomp. And I remember Adam Jeremiah and I just watching Harrison Ingram hit threes and Elliot Cadeau dish out full court assists and, and just the offense is just clicking in there nearing and, and eventually get to over 60 points and as soon as they kind of got up toward the the 50s low 50s i start going through every season on tennessee's website and just clicking through every single box score of every game because i'm i'm just thinking in my head you know rick barnes has been at tennessee forever i can't imagine they've allowed 60 points a lot in the first half and i think we eventually came up to the point of it being it was the highest or the most points allowed by Tennessee since the game in, I think, 2012. And it was the most points 
and a half in general that since I think 2006 it was the first time they'd allowed over 60 points since I think the second half against Auburn in, in one of those games. Um, but even more so than that, just the game in general is kind of crazy because in the second half, you had Tennessee make that push back. Dalton Connect scores 37 points. He sprains his ankle, and I think he misses the last two or three minutes. And when Dalton Connect is going on this run, everyone's talking about him breaking the Smith Center scoring record, which R.J. Davis went on to break later in the year by scoring 42 points. But who knows how many points Dalton Connect scores if he doesn't get hurt with you know two or three minutes to go in that game. And then just at the end with the press conferences, I mean, Armando, you could write an entire book about all the quotes he had, you know, through his career. But that night, I think it was the funniest thing was, what did he say, Adam? He's like, we almost had necked or what? He totally butchered his name. And he he called him necked. He was, (laughs) he he stopped what he was saying at one point and said, and we almost had neck too. Think about how scary that would have been. I was like, yeah. (laughs) And I mean, of course, I guess that's an Armando thing to say now, because for those of you who are on Twitter, after Anthony Harris had the huge game to close out the Suns the other night, uh, Armando tweeted out, we almost had Ant or something like that. It's something along those lines. Um, and then I think someone might have quote tweeted Armando to give them their all almost had him team for UNC. And it was a great list that he came up with. Um, I think he included LeBron on that list, obviously. Uh, so maybe down Excellent. the road, Ar- Ar- Armando, Armando might be the lead recruiter for UNC basketball one day later down the road once he's done with his playing days. And, and that could be pretty good. But just that Tennessee game in general, because I think that one, when you look back on the season as a whole, that's where you kind of saw the signs that UNC could be a pretty, you know, consistent top 10 team. Because at the end of the day, I know the the finish was disappointing for being a one seed and getting knocked out in the fashion that they did. But at the end of the day, UNC was what the preseason number 19 team. I mean, they they outperformed their preseason expectations by a lot. And and for the most part, we're pretty much in the top 10 from that point on. and just all the little tidbits in that game. I mean, Ellie Cadeau had 10 assists and, and I think zero turnovers that game. And that was during a stretch where Cadeau had just 25, 26 assists to like four or five turnovers over a five game stretch. Um, but that game was definitely one that you look back on and you kind of see this kind of hinted at what the, the year was going to kind of be. And there's also just some fun little tidbits um, like the Armando quote and, and obviously Don't Connect going off. I love it. That was a exciting important game for the season perhaps also kind of washed away some of the the stuff from the previous season which uh, we've talked about it at length that win was really a statement win for the program for unc great answer evan adam you are up third here do you have a quote moment or anecdote from the season that was on the beat i have way too many to choose from i although i have come up with a, a moment or two to share, but it was kind of funny as I'm looking over again, looking over here at the, the, the roll call of the games, the schedule of the games, actually, well, I'm all over the place. Wanted to answer my guy, George Jenkins, or we, I mean, I, am I like just everything George says, I just react to, <laughs> um, you know, he's like, it's just, you know, Pavlov's dog situation here. <laughs> um, but yes, George, yes. To answer your question about, um, the impact of sports betting. And for whatever reason, for whatever reason, I am reminded of, we walked into uh, the arena in DC, the ACC tournament, uh, UNC's opener. We had been there for a day or two and, you know, like this wasn't our first time there, but we're walking in to like sort of get ready to cover the UNC FSU, what quarterfinal game. And uh, one of our colleagues, one of our friends, friend of the show uh, who are not, we're not going to mention, his or her or their name, but they told me just as I was goofing off and setting up stuff, they said, um, look, I'm gonna need the Tar Heels to win by 10 today. Um, so yes, not only not only was the 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 fan stuff was evident, the groans, the reactions, like I mean, really. Um, I think Evan could probably tell us something, you know, from his personal life uh that that nearly made him uh in a better financial situation. But um but th- that person said, yeah, I'm going to need the Tar Heels by 10 today. And I think, you know, they blew FSU out. I think they won by 25 or whatever. But yes, George, to answer your question. Um, but yeah, I was going down the, the the list of the games here. It's just wild the things that you think about in terms of like the behind the scenes moments that we love to talk about. Like if you just think about it, uh, like the Bahamas, Jalen Withers 
happening to say to me that he's up five at the casino and when I never <laughs> could quite nail down what uh, amount of measurement five was. Um, you know, it was a hell of a revelation from a guy who was like three or four games into his UNC career. So I was asking him if he was going to all the water slides down there in Nassau. And he's like, nah, nah, I've, I've, I've been at the craps table. <laughs> well, how are you doing? We up five. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, but yeah, so I was thinking about Withers at Nassau. I was thinking about, I'm just going down. Like, so I've gone from November to December, January 2nd. How about Harrison Ingram going two for 14? I think is if I've got it right. Two for 14 at Pittsburgh. What was he doing when we talked to him in the locker room? Laughing his tail off about how terrible he shot, but they still won the game. I mean, that was like one of those moments where you're like, yeah, Harrison Ingram's kind of a different guy. He's not sulking. He's not like, don't come around me. He happened to hit two huge shots in the last five minutes of that game, I feel like. But, you know, someone said to him, like, did you see your line? And he just busted out laughing at how bad his stat line was. Um the next game at Clemson, Paxson Wojcik, go ahead three pointer. He happens to tell us, uh, you know, oh by the way, yeah, I've still got ten staples in my head from what was it, the Charleston Southern game, I think. He had the stitches from my forehead is way bigger than his. He had the stitches from before the season opener, like the the pregame shoot around. Then he got staples in his head. He had like ten stitches and seven staples, or vice versa on that. How about Ingram? A couple nights later, taking out one of the richest men in North Carolina <laughs> at NC State when he went tumbling over uh, into the front row. And then he asked me later that night, like, who was that? And I was like, his name's Wendell Murphy. His name's on every building around here, dude. <laughs> like, I mean, um, anyway. Uh, but, yeah, like, I'm just – like, I was looking at all these, and I'm like, good gosh, I could just um, – you know, there was one day – oh, it was at UVA where Cormac was just uh, sort of allowing himself to relish the fact, I think he hit six threes that day and that he, he had shushed them. Um, but I was asking Cormac in Charlotte it, it, during the NCAA tournament um, about the little sort of the black eye that he had, where he'd gotten that from. And he said he'd gotten that from uh, Michael O'Connell, NC State, uh, maybe a shoulder to the, to the face in the ACC championship game, the tournament championship game. And I happened to say to Cormac, yeah, yeah, I thought you might have embellished that a little bit, which I wasn't trying to, like, call him out, but I thought it happened right in front of Jeremiah and I, and I thought he was, like, basically trying to get a – maybe it might have been the fifth foul on O'Connell. Um, and so Cormac sort of took offense to that and was like, you know, no, I was not embellishing it. And at some point he goes, uh, have you ever had a black eye? He says to me. And I was like, yes, I have. And then he goes, do you want another one? <laughs> so I was like, no, I don't want another one, Cormac. Um, but – Anyway, to, to wrap it up, to wrap up my rambling, the uh, unfortunately, everything I go back to is L.A. because it's the last time that it, something happened. But here's a moment that I haven't shared. It's not a Bob Bryan tribute like someone was saying in the comments. I could I could do it again. Um, but so the day before UNC ultimately loses to Alabama and which was also the day before Clemson ultimately beats Arizona. Those were the four teams out there, obviously, the West Regional. We are there. We are doing our normal, like, try to cover the heck out of what's happening. Um, Evan has gotten his preview in. Jeremiah's videoing practice. I mean, we're trying to do everything we can. So I am going from the, the media room there where the, you can set up and just work at your laptop and everything to the court because UNC is, is starting to get going with their practice out there. Um and so I'm walking, I'm looking at my phone because I think Michelle was slacking me something. Um, and so I happened to be just walking through a little hallway from the media room to the court. Uh, and I hear someone say, oh, I knew it. And I didn't realize what that was. And then this someone tapped me on the shoulder. And so I turned around. It was Caleb Love. And I could not believe it. Um, and he was saying, oh, I knew it about my dumb ass. Uh, <laughs> and so Caleb Love and I had uh, a moment there in the hallway that uh, honestly about brought me to tears. And we we hug, we had a hug. And uh, he's asking me if I voted him for All-American. 
And I was like, I didn't have a vote, Caleb. You know, like, I mean, like, just imagine, just imagine this scene. Um, so we talked for uh, just probably 30 or 45 seconds. It was very quick, but it felt like a long time. And uh, I told him I was happy for his success. Little did we know that he was going to go 0 for 9 from 3 the very next night. And RJ was going to go 0 for 9 from 3 the very next night. Um, but um, that that was an amazing one, honestly, the 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 Caleb thing. Um, couldn't believe it. Um, so I don't know if I have a, a way to finish it. I was thinking I had, might have had another good anecdote. Oh, I know what it was. Um, also, that media room, unfortunately, I was shutting it down one night, and I got to talking to um, one of the workers there, and um, this dude looked like he had seen some things. Um, and he said that he had worked there at the arena forever. And he was started telling us about, um, working the Oscars. Um, it, it was just super interesting. Like he had seen everything, you know what I mean? Like he had, you're not going to surprise him. And he said that they, they had just had the Oscars there, um, at that arena. And he said that it was a real kind of like just circus because it rained that day in LA, which I didn't know. But he said, you got to, you know, he's like, man, you got to think about it. You got like, you know, $10,000 haircuts, <laughs> like that, that people were trying not to get messed up. And was, he was doing his hands and like motioning about how all these assistants were trying to keep people's dresses and gowns covered. And, you know, like I just, that was a heck, heck of a line. You got $10,000 haircuts, um, which I was like, yeah, I guess a little bit more than I spend on mine. But um, that was kind of a neat little. Uh, moment too because he was asking me about unc you know he's like tell me about tar heels and like and now he starts talking about the oscars i'm like good lord dude you know he sees jack nicholson all the time it's no it's nothing to him so um anyway those are some of mine i love it the three of you gave some great stories the three of you also did not talk very much about football which is great because my story is football related i was holding my breath to see if anybody was going to steal mine it's Drake May related. Obviously, Drake May has been in the news. He was the third pick in the draft to the Patriots. Um, and my story is about Drake really walking off the field in that UNC Duke game. Uh, I wasn't on the beat a lot this season, but that was one of the games that I was covering. Um, and I you know, had the uh, opportunity to be on the field during the field storm and sort of follow the victory bell with my camera. Uh, quite the moment there trying to navigate the, the crowds and things like that. When I think about this past year, that's certainly a moment that sticks out to me. But then also Drake May getting the chance of, you know, one more year, which I think even at that time, everyone kind of understood that, you know, this was probably Drake's last game in Keenan Stadium. Uh, and, and the press conference afterwards, him talking about the emotion, he really didn't get into it very much because uh, that's not necessarily, you know, Drake's MO, especially in those press conference settings to, to, you know, empty his chest in terms of all the emotions that he felt. But, you know, the more I reflected on it, you know, this is, you know, one of the things Drake does say over and over again, he says, I'm a Carolina kid. He talks about, I grew up a Carolina fan, you know, the family connections that we all know. And the opportunity that he had in that last game to walk off this, uh, the Keenan Stadium field, you know, with the, the field rushed, everyone chanting his name for a Carolina kid, that must have been such a cool moment. And I was thinking about it in the in the press conference as well. I couldn't find the, the right way to craft this question, so that's obviously why I didn't say it. And it's also less of a question and more of a statement. But you know, Drake was committed to Alabama. He had to understand, there had to be a piece of him that understood that when he switched from going to Alabama to picking UNC, there were going to be some sacrifices from a team goals perspective. That's one of the things that came up, you know, over the draft process. You know, if Drake had gone to Alabama, Alabama would have won the national championship, all those different types of things. And Drake did not have a national championship moment at UNC as a football player. They won the Coastal Division title. They you know, had some, certainly some big games, but he, the Carolina kid had his Carolina moment walking off the field to beat Duke, the crowd chanting his name. So I thought that was a very cool moment for the UNC quarterback. And now he's off to bigger and better things in the NFL. So that's my 
moment to close. We are pulling up on 9.57 here on the East Coast. Uh, we are running up on time. So I'm just going to take a quick second to give a few shout outs and I'm going to let the panel do the same. This is the last on the beat of the year. So I want to give a shout out to some of the behind the scenes people. Shout out to John Siegley. He does all of the audio and the podcast stuff for these shows and all of Inside Carolina shows. So shout out to John. You do an awesome job behind the scenes for us. Shout out to Michelle. She does so much behind the scenes uh, for the team. Shout out to Tommy, Tommy Ashley. He's not here tonight, uh, but he helps out and he's been on this show many times, of course, but he does so much behind the scenes as well. Shout out to Ben. Shout out to the rest of the Inside Carolina team uh, for a great season, helping the four of us on the screen um, as, and really the three of you on the screen as you completed all of your beat duties this year. I'll open up for the panel. Final thoughts, any shout outs you want to give here on the last show of the year? Evan, we'll start with you. Yeah, it's been a, a lot of fun. Great first year hanging out with Adam and Jeremiah on the beat. I've learned a ton. Uh, I know, who was it, Martha earlier asking me if I was going to stick around after graduation. Unfortunately, I am a junior, so <laughs> you got one more with, one more year with me. Uh, I, I will be back for my senior year. Uh, but, you know, thank we gotta you. we got to figure out a way to make Evan a super senior. I mean, we got to get out there right now. We got to get some sort of GoFundMe, NIL, something. I mean, let's keep this this three. You know, we got it's a three man weave here. You know, you used to playing the three on three tournaments back in the day, or at least my old butt did. You know, like yeah. Anyway, sorry to interrupt you, Evan. Well, you know, we got to we got to get a fifth year. Well, if if we're a three man team, I'm just hanging out in the corner, letting Adam and Jeremiah do all the work. Um, but no, seriously, thank you to you guys. Obviously, Ben uh, does a lot of help and work behind the scenes. Uh, John and Tommy for hosting the podcast. Let me hop on. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Um, also, shout out to Tommy and Grace for the baseball coverage they're doing right now. Uh, maybe planning a trip for Omaha in the near future, I've heard. Um, and then also shout out to uh, Jalen, the other intern. Uh, he's a video intern. He's a year older than me. Uh, just got a big uh, announcement to what he's doing in his future plans. I'm not going to steal his thunder. I'm going to let him, you know, announce that when he's ready, but he's doing some great and big things and just looking forward to what next year has and just excited to keep growing. Love it. Appreciate those shouts to, to Ben and, and Jalen, of course, as well. Shout out to Hawkins, our, our, our photog, loyal photog too. Jeremiah, I, what about I have you? To, sorry, I have to shout out Jim. If I don't shout out Jim, he might be, <laughs> he might be texting me in an hour. So shout out to Jim. He drives most of the places. Uh, he is the most knowledgeable man I know. Uh, he has been great to work as well with. All right, Jeremiah. Yeah, man. Um, I guess by name, you know, pretty much everybody's been, you know, shouted out. I'll, I'll try to, you know, make sure I, I kind of get everybody. Um, well, first of all, I mean, yeah, just I have a shout out to, you know, Ben, Buck, and everybody, you know, this being my first year at I see, uh, Obviously, like I said before, like, yeah, I had – a year of experience, you know, at college before, but then, you know, kind of coming here, you know, um, I see it's definitely a different beast for sure. So, you know, appreciate them, uh, you know, kind of give me that opportunity to, you know, come back home a little bit and, uh, you know, continue to learn. So um, grateful for that. Um, certainly shout out to Adam and Jim, you know, spent a lot of, I was in a lot of cities with Adam and Jim, uh, you know, kind of being around those guys, working with those guys and getting to know them, honestly, just, uh, you know, as people. Um, so, you know, I thought that was cool, man. Appreciated that. Like the work's going to be what it is. Um, but, you know, like definitely got to know them. So, uh, you know, shout out to them. Shout out to both Evan and Jalen, you know, proud of those two. Excited to see what they do. Obviously, I'm glad Evan's coming back. Uh, you know, happy for Jalen. You know what I'm saying? For um, you know, everything he's about to do, uh, you know, nothing he does really surprises me because I kind of, you know, seen it. So, yeah, shout out to him. Uh, let me see. Obviously, John Bowman and uh, John Bowman, who's here with us right now. We got Tommy Ashley as well. And then Joey Powell for, uh, you know, the football pre games. So shout out to those guys. Um, you know, good to get out here. It sound like, I, you know, uh, watch the games a little bit, you know, so that's always fun. Uh, let me see. Big shout out to Michelle. Great behind the scenes. You know, you guys don't really, you know, see Michelle, see all the, everything she does. Well, you really, you do see it, but you don't really realize it's her. So shout out to Michelle. Um, let me see. Uh, shout out to Trish as well. Um, you know, Trish Sanders got to get a shout out too. Uh, definitely got to get a shout out. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, Sherelle and Don, you know, holding it down on the recruiting. So we got to give shout outs to them. I'm really trying to get everybody. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I'm trying to make sure we cover our bases. Uh, let's go Sean Moran and uh, Jason Staples. They got to get shout outs. Uh, I like it. You know what I mean? So, man, who am I missing? I think that's everybody. I think that's everybody. I don't know yeah. that you missed anybody. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But shout out to shout out to everybody that I see. Steve uh, Kirshner, Jeremy Sharp, for real, yeah, like Bubba yeah, Cunningham. Like, <laughs> I realized too. We had a comment earlier in the show. Shout out to people who don't use the term shout out. Well, I'm sorry. We we had to hey. we had to do it. Halfway decent. We we let you down. Adam, shout you get the mom, final shout word. Shout out to my dad. You know. <laughs> Brothers, brothers at home, you know, shout out to everybody. <laughs> right. Adam, you oh, get the needed. final final word here. Closing thoughts. Uh, you can can take us out in this in this final show of the year. Oh man. It's like uh signing the yearbook, isn't it? Um, you know, what raise hell this summer. Do people still say that? That's I'm really dating myself on that one. Uh yeah. I mean, heck, my kids are getting their yearbooks. Uh, you know. Jeez, Louise. But yes, I could not concur more with the shout outs. John, I thought that was a very nice Drake May anecdote you gave. It's so funny how, like, what have we been doing this for the last eight or nine months? There's so much stuff that freaking happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, Drake May's last game at UNC is something to remember. But good Lord, think about all the stuff that's happened between now and then. Mac was crying that night, so everyone thought Mac was retiring. Heck, we wrote, got a story about it. Well, I think we wrote a story about it. Yeah, we did. Um, but yeah, shout out to everyone from Buck and Ben, you know, the top all the way down. Um, and I think, uh, we couldn't do this without, uh, Tommy Ashley's leadership, the show without John, John's willingness to wear a whole lot of different hats. I mean, he's getting, you know, outlines of shows ready about what we're going to talk about while we're just off walking the dog and mowing the yard. I mean, um, you know, these guys put all the effort in. We show up, put on a headset, and just run our mouths, um, which I'm extremely thankful everyone likes listening to. I wanted to shout out the audience. Mm -hmm. I love you guys. Um, I used to pick on Ross constantly because Ross, well, yeah, I had to I had to have some ammunition because I was getting it at all times from Ross, you know, no matter it's 6 a.m. or, you know, midnight. Uh, but Ross, there was nothing Ross loved more than us to be walking into a basketball arena or a football stadium and someone in a parking lot or somewhere going into the place saw us and said, Hey, Ross and Adam, he loved it. And it was always someone from probably these shows, you know? Um, so and with that said, we got to shout out Jeremiah and Evan. I mean, this was their first year with us. Um, you know, these guys are young dudes um, and they are, coming fast like Jordan ship and Chris Culliver in the wide receiver room at UNC football. These guys are making things happen and um, they've got great careers ahead of them. But yeah, I mean this, we've kind of had a, a I, I haven't felt this way, but we've kind of had sort of a new team together this school year. And um, I'm very appreciative of them, all their hard work. I'm very appreciative of them for putting up with me. And um, it's been great. I think we got a lot of great things ahead of ourselves. Um, you know, I have to mention, even though have we ever had him on, Jim Hawkins, uh, IC legendary photographer. <laughs> um, I would hear, hear about it if I if I didn't say anything about it. The man is my hero and mentor. I love him dearly. Um, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, but, you know, he may be putting together a book um, about his career. So if we can get the thing started and then get it to the finish line. Um, so maybe look for that in three or four years. Um, but you know, he's the best. He, um, he leads Jeremiah everywhere we go. You know, he's, he knows the best places to go in every city. He's always in communication with Pam, the travel agent. And, uh, we're lucky to have him. We're lucky to have, uh, the amount of wisdom, you know, taking us places like that and mixing in the occasional Dean Smith story that Jim has or, um, you know, it, it's, it's amazing the knowledge that the man has running around his head, but just thanks to everyone. Appreciate everybody, uh, tuning in with us. Um, it will be August before we know it. <laughs> it really will. And, uh, George Bob would never be pissed. I got his number. <laughs> um, so there.
uh, but um, thanks to everybody. I've had a great time and I look forward to, and as Evan said, Hey, we're going to have some, some more good. I think UNC baseball coverage. We're going to ramp that up a little bit here in May and June. And who knows how long that season go. You never know. You might, you might, we might have to do a special on the beat for uh, an Omaha edition. We'll have to see about that. Um, but thanks to everyone. And uh, you know, when you see us, Around town, holler. Uh, always good to see everyone and uh, appreciate everyone's support.